people often ask us, especially in our Pico Pong video, how we get these nice little images on these cute little screens. Well, we've made an online tool that'll turn images to code, and then we've got some code that'll turn that back into an image and it displays it on those little screens. And this is ideal for these tiny little 2-bit images. Today we'll show you everything, we've done everything for you and we're going to show you how it all works and all the code, the online tool, it's all free. We'll even show you how Base64 encoding works. But you can skip that if you want. We use SSD 1306 OLED displays, which are these guys. Um, we've also tested the code on 1315s and the code also works on them. We have done the code in another language, but if you wanted to use a different language or a different screen, then we're going to take you through the code, show you how it can be easily adapted to fit your particular chosen screen and chosen language. Let's get on with the video. Use the application of your choice to create your black and white image. For example, I'm using Affinity Designer on the Mac. And I'm using Inkscape on the Raspberry Pi. Then use our tool to convert your image to code. We'll show you how to get that tool and how to use that later on in the video. But first we'll demonstrate it. I'm using this picture I took of my little sister and I turned it black and white and shrunk it to 128 by 64 pixels. You have two options to convert your image to code. You can either use our terminal command or you could use our online tool on our website. Link should be in the description. Here I'm using our online tool to convert our image to code. So here's my file selected in Finder. I'm just going to drag it into this green area and drop it and you can see it's appeared here with a little image of my image. Press this green convert button, then copy all this by pressing this copy button and then I'm going to paste it into my code. We'll show you how to get hold of this code and we'll talk you through the code later on as well. And I'm just going to run this program and see if it works. I could maybe play around and fill up the empty space on my image but that's good for now. I've just typed in, in the terminal, the name of our command. Um, later on in the video, I'll show you where to get this command so you can get it on your computer. I've then given it the path to my image and pressed enter. Now it spits out my image, which has been converted to code. And I'm going to copy this bit. I'm pasting that as a string right into my code. Let's run this code and see if we see my little sister on the screen. I think that's turned out really well. So what are we going to give you? Well, we're going to give you the link to our online image to code converter, which is on our website. We are also going to give you that other tool that you can have on your own computer that will convert your image to code. We will give you the example codes to show those images on those cool little screens in circa Python or MicroPython, if you prefer that. We're also going to show you how those programs work, so then you're not limited to MicroPython and CircuitPython, and you can just take our code and run. We are going to show you exactly how everything works. Trust me, it's going to be easy to understand. Now what my sister's going to explain next is very interesting. She's going to explain Base64 and code. Now if you're not interested or you just want to get onto putting your image onto your screen, then you can skip this part by using the chapters below. Here I have my image, hopefully you can see it says hi. And the first thing that happens when your image is converted is it's converted into a binary. So the first binary number given represents the width of your image and the next one represents the height of your image. My image here is 16 pixels by 8 pixels. So my first value is 16, my next value is 8. So I need to convert these two numbers into binary. If you want to learn or learn more about number bases, don't worry, we've got a video on that, which shows you how to convert from any number base you like to any other number base. I've converted these two values to binary, and here are the first two binary numbers that will be given when this image is converted. For the next values, we start converting each pixel in our image. One pixel is represented by one bit, which is just one of these binary digits. So of course that can either be a 1 or a 0, which represent on or off, so in our case black or white. And the first pixel here is blank, which means it's a 0. The next two are filled in, which means they're both 1s. Then we have 1, 2, 3 blank pixels, so that's three zeros. Then we have two black pixels, that's two 1s. Now, when our image is converted to binary, it's represented as an array of binary numbers, and each binary number is represented by 8 bits, um, which is also a byte. So, each number consists of 8 digits. 
So we've converted the first eight pixels into this number, so we can just convert this into decimal, which is 99. Again, don't worry if you don't know how to convert between number bases. And now we move on to the next set of eight pixels. So that's one, two, three, four zeros, one, two ones, and then one, two zeros. And when we convert that to decimal, I get 12. I'll just do one more, which is this set of eight pixels, and it's just a duplicate of the set of pixels above, so we can just copy this. A quick note, the highest value that can be represented by 8 bits, or a byte, is 255. So of course, if your width or height of your screen exceeds 255, then you might only use 2 bytes instead of just 1. So this process keeps happening until your full image has been converted to an array of binary numbers. Then, all this data is converted to Base64 encoded. Just like in an email attachment, the attachment in the email is Base64 encoded. So this just means all those binary numbers have been converted to base64, which has 64 um, digits and uses things like capital and lowercase letters. Now we're going to convert this binary data into base64 encoding. Any 6-bit binary number, so that's a binary number with 6 digits, can be represented by just one character in base64 encoding. So to convert this binary data, it's split up into sets of six digits. And each set of those six digits is converted to a base64 encoding character. I've got a chart here with the six bit binary number and it's equivalent when it's converted to base64 encoding on the right here. So let's get converting. The first number is 000100. And then if we look on our chart, here it is, and it's base64 equivalent is capital E. Now we need to convert the next set, which is these six digits. Then we convert this set of six digits, then this set of six digits, and then so on and so forth. We'll just work out the first four base64 characters when this image has been converted. So I've written these six-bit binary numbers clearer on this board. The next one is six zeros. If we find that on our table, it's right at the top, and that's a capital A. The next one is one zero 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 one. On our sheet, that's a lowercase h. And the next one is one zero 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 one one. Hey guys, it's Kayla up here. I'm busy editing this and I thought that you guys might want to have a guess at this last one um, before my sister does. So pause the video and see if you can guess the letter. And that is a lowercase j. So we have the first four characters of this image, base64 encoded. I've actually created this image on my computer and we'll just pop this onto our online base64 encoder and check if the results that we worked out are correct. So I have the replica of what was drawn on the board here as a file so I'm going to drag it over, drop it and you can see the image really tiny here, press convert and here is the image that was on our whiteboard in base64 encoded and the first four characters are capital E, A, then lowercase h and J just like what we worked out, so we were correct. You can find our online tools on our website, gurglabs.com, link should be in the description. And our terminal command, I will show you how to get that later on in the video and get it set up on your computer. But now you understand how that image gets to the code, let me explain how that code gets back to the image on your little screen. All our code will be found on our image to code repository on GitHub, link should be in the description. And also our um, terminal command can be found there as well for you to download and put on your computer. As I mentioned earlier, we did write um, a MicroPython version and a CircuitPython version, but don't let that limit to you. You can um, adapt the code to your program of choice. So firstly, in the MicroPython and CircuitPython code, we use this program called base64.py. And we're standing on the shoulders of giants here because this code wasn't written by us. In fact, you can see here it was written before I was born. And you need to make sure you've got this file in order for the code to work. Most languages can base64 decode. And if you can't figure out how to do that, someone will have written some code where the base64 decode. So you can just nick that code. 
if you're not using CircuitPython or MicroPython. Let's get started with the MicroPython version. As you can see, there are not many lines to this program. I did say it would be easy to understand. Let's start off with this infinite loop down here. So first we're clearing the screen and then we're running this function called show image. Now what is that function? Here it is up here. You can see we just pass in image and I'll put that on our little screen. Now we're passing this show image function ziva image. So what is ziva image? Well it's this. You can see we're using the program that was written before I was born to base64 decode that string ziva we put in earlier. We are then putting that into a byte array and giving that to our custom to buff function. And as my sister explained, it takes the first thing out of that byte array and sets that as the width and then it takes the second thing out and sets that as the height. So that's the first two things custom to buff does. We are then using a frame buffer to turn that byte array into an image. Noticing we give it everything apart from the first two bytes because we use them as our width and height. So to recap, we use our show image function to show that our image on the little SSD screen. That image originated from the string we put in earlier, but for the string to get to that image it has to be base64 decoded and then put into a byte array to be run by our custom debuff function that turns the byte array into an image. Now for the circuit buff and code. I quite like the way we've done, we've done this since um, if you understand how this code works then you'll have more understanding for if you take the code and convert it into a different language. The only main difference from the CircuitPython and MicroPython code is that for the CircuitPython code we don't have a frame buffer to convert the byte array into an image. I'm going to focus on explaining this function because that is the only main thing that has changed. Like before, we take the first and second thing out of the byte array and set them as the width and height. Now, since we do not have a frame buffer, instead, we're going to go through the um, byte array manually, taking each byte and using a bitmap to place it in the correct place on the screen. Pix is the byte that we're on, and we obviously skip the first two because they're the width and the height. We are then going into that byte and taking the first bit and placing it on the screen. We then take the second bit, etc., till we've done all eight bits. We then increase the column by eight since we filled in the first eight pixels. To know if we've gone off the side of the screen, we check if the column is bigger than the width of the screen, and if it is, we just add one onto the row, moving onto the row below us, and then we set the column back to zero since we're on a new row now. And then pix would be the fourth byte, and we'll do that process again and again and again until we finish the byte array. This is just a visual interpretation of what is happening. Now hopefully you've um, understood that. If you have any questions, leave a comment. Um, everything else is similar. There's just a few changes here and there because obviously it's a new, a different language. Now there's one thing left. If you did want to use our image to code terminal command, now I'm just going to explain how to get that and how to get it set up for your computer. You'll want to head over to our GitHub page, link should be in the description, and find the image to code repository and download that onto your computer. I'm just copying the URL and git cloning it in the terminal. If I go ls-al, you'll see I've got my image to code folder here that we just got off GitHub, and I'm just going to cd change directory into that. Then if we go ls-al, you can see we've got a terminal command here, convertimage.py. To run our convertimage.py terminal command, we have to go dot forward slash convert underscore image.py. The reason why we go dot um, forward slash is because the path to our convertimage.py command isn't in its environment variables. If you want to know, learn more about environment variables, we've got a video on that, so go check that out. But briefly, it doesn't know the path to convertimage.py, so putting dot forward slash shows us the path because it's in where we are right now. If I press enter, it says permission denied. This is because we do not have the permission to run this um, command. If we come up here, you can see we've got RWRR. -R, R stands for read and W stands for write. There should be an X up there for execute. So we need to put an X up there. To do this, we go chmod, change mod, a plus x, and then our file name, convertimage.py. 
The A plus X gives all, so that's the user, the group, the owner, etc., the permission to execute. So if I open up a new terminal and check the permissions again, you can see on the right now we've got X's in it for execute. So let's run it again, and yay, it works. Now all this is saying is we just need to pass it a path to our image so it can convert that image. So we'll do that, and it spits out all this stuff. A few things um, we thought we'd mention before we go. First of all, there's lots of redundancy in these images, and we could really compress them, but we thought at the time it worked for our purposes, and we just thought, let's just keep it simple. When base64 encoding, you may notice one or two equal signs, and that's padding, so I'm just gonna show you what that is now. And as we've mentioned earlier, when the image is converted, it's converted to binary, which is represented in bytes. So let's just say we've got three bytes. To convert this to base64 encoding, we take each set of six digits and convert it to a base64 encoding character. So here we can see that these all match up. And this is the base64 encoding character Q. Then we convert the next set of six digits, the next set of six digits, and then the next set of six digits until it's all been converted. And in this case, because it's three bytes, everything matches up. But what if we have two bytes? We've got these two left over. And because we've filled up and converted these two bytes here, we can just get rid of these two bits at the end, this one and zero. But if we're converting from this end across, we can add in another six bits and that means this six bits, including these two extra leftovers, can all be um, counted as just one byte. So the equal sign means that we disregard all of this and these two bits here. So just essentially this byte, we can think of it as another byte. Um, it can just be disregarded and we just need to focus on this. And that's why I'll see those um, equal signs, because it's just easier when you're converting in this direction. Well done for sticking around to the end. As usual, there's an article on this video and our other videos on our website, girlgalaps.com. So, link should be in the description. If you have any questions about this video, please leave a comment. Um, I'm sure we'll respond or some of our amazing subscri subscribers will respond to your comment. If you found this video helpful or you like this video, please give us a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll see you next time. Bye.